Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jorge Artieda. I'm the uh, the attorney for the respondent, Ms. Espinal. Uh, uh, this is a petition for review from a, a BIA affirmance of an immigration judge uh, a deportation a removal order. And uh, uh, the issue, the way Ms. Espinal sees it, is whether uh, exception to the uh, categorical approach can be um, added the way Matter of Bautista has set it up. Uh, Ms. Espinal is a uh, a lawful permanent resident. She obtained it through her parents, who are both lawful permanent residents. Uh, her child, two-year-old child, is a United States citizen, and our whole family have some sort of status. In 2010, she was convicted of uh, a Maryland statute, an indivisible statute in Maryland, as to um, uh, is arson. Why don't you just go right ahead? We, we, we know the record. Why don't you tell us why you think the board is uh, wrong? Board is wrong because they're they're adding an exception to the categorical approach, which is not permitted. Categorical approach has the uh, uh, has the category the how do you determine an aggravated felony has the categorical approach tool, the modified categorical approach tool, and the exception by um, by Nijawan that looks into the circumstance specific, and that's uh, and the Bautista, matter Bautista wants to add a new exception by uh, calling an element, which is crucial for a conviction, a, a, a jurisdictional element, and based on that, to just decide that you can do away with an element and pretty much destroy the categorical approach as understood by the Supreme Court. And I think that's the issue that, that we see here. Why Bautista is wrong is because um, it, it considered a jurisdictional element something they can just do away with. And uh, can, you, can you tell us any statute enacted by any state in, in the nation that has a federal jurisdictional component? No, uh, it, it doesn't, but it doesn't matter. And that, that's, uh, that's a question that uh, is raised through all the circuits, the 5th, the 7th, the 8th, the 9th, that because there's no state statute with a federal jurisdictional statute, it means that no crime, in this case arson, can ever become a, uh, an aggravated felony. And that's not true because a, uh, an arson could become, not under 844-I, but it can become a crime of violence, aggravated felony. And as a matter of fact, matter of mootness, number one, that I mentioned in my brief, the dissent names many crimes that would not qualify, that the dissent claims would not qualify as aggravated felonies under, yeah, just because they don't have the jurisdictional element. However, they could qualify as uh, 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 crimes of violence, aggravated felonies. Uh, they could qualify as crime involved in moral turpitude. They can qualify uh, in removal proceedings for purposes of the well, under, discussion. Under, under this, th is that your answer to the term aggravated felony applies to an offense described in this paragraph, whether in violation of federal or state law? How do you read that? Well, the way I read it that, is... Is that your answer? Well, the way I read that, that's a penultimate paragraph, is the way the Supreme Court reads it, and Lopez v. Gonzalez, that it can serve two purposes, but never to, to swallow the entire aggravated felony rule. You, they can serve purposes of deciding what an aggravated Would felony your interpretation is. interpretation not swallow violation of state law? See, I'm sorry? Wouldn't your interpretation swallow violation of state law? If you have to have the federal nexus in the state law of crime, if you have to have the the federal the inter, inter, interstate nexus, yeah, if you have to have an interstate nexus. But well, how, what do you do with state law mm -hmm. out of what I just read? How, how does that ever apply to find an aggravated felony? Yes, it, it's really easy. It's uh, you 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 qualify them, you categorize them as aggravated felonies under the under the. Um, a crime of violence prong, for example, arson and the matter of Palacios, and I think Fourth Circuit also, it, the case escapes me, but has also found that uh, arson, state arson, could qualify as a, as a crime of violence. And uh, that's why you don't need to find this arson as as an arson for purposes of... So an aggravated violence. felony has to be a crime of violence? No, arson could be a crime of violence. The problem with a penultimate sentence is that it's assuming that if you don't find this type of arson, state arson, an aggravated felony under 844-I, you will never find it an aggravated felony. And as a matter of fact, they went 
far, so far as to say that no state crimes that have no jurisdictional elements will ever be uh, a crime, uh, an aggravated felony, and that's not true. You can find an aggravated felony as a crime of violence, and that's not the end. Uh, you, as a, for example, in ICE... So, we, so you, you think for that, for the term violation of state law, uh, violation of state law, here you have to look at another statute to understand not just what this means, but to find the existence of that state law violation. It's not in this statute. You'd have, it necessarily you have to look to other federal statutes on aggravated felons. It, for, yeah, for purposes of, of the categorical approach, that's what you say. You have to match the elements with the elements, at least for 844 purposes. You have to match the elements. In this case, 844, yes, doesn't have uh, the state arson statute does not have the the, the jurisdictional element, but uh, but but it looks like the government is uh, or, or Bautista, I'm sorry, Bautista is, is deciding that the jurisdictional element. If is we just, say if we say if we were to decide that the jurisdictional comment is not an element, do you lose? Yeah, well, the categorical approach would uh, would be destroyed pretty much, and yes, in that case, okay. yeah, because the understanding of the Supreme Court is either use a tool with co categorical, modified categorical, or the other one I is... I just the, asked, but under your approach, as you see it, if that is not an element of the crime, then the argument fails. Uh, in this case, yes. Yep, yeah, yeah. appreciate your honesty. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes, but, but, uh, but remember that uh, all these... Circuits have held. I'm not saying you do. I'm just asking okay. on that hypothetical. Right. But but it's not. Uh, what I'm saying is that in one footnote that uh, the Third Circuit said that if you don't find an 844 under, uh, if you don't find an arson state state arson uh, conviction, uh, an aggravated felony under 844, you can. There's other ways of finding it. It's not the end of the inquiry. I mean, there's ways to to set it up. So uh, because they they set they, they set it up in such a tone that so. Uh, fatal that if you don't find it here, you're never going to find it anywhere, and that's not true. So there's there's ways of, uh, uh, as the, as the footnote in the Third Circuit said, it's only a way of uh, uh, of stopping um, what's it called, um, remove a mandatory removal. But there's other ways that Immigration Customs Enforcement can go in and and, and charge the person. But to the jurisdictional element uh, in the camps and uh, Alito and his dissent in the camps actually. Uh, well, in the in the main opinion, and uh, suggested that an element is something that a jury would, if they don't find it, will be hung, and they could not decide on the guilt of someone. They never decided whether the importance uh, or the different. They never differentiated an element based on how you add an adjective to that word, jurisdictional element or not. If it's an element that a jury has to decide or the fact finder has to decide, then it's an element and it's important. So why why does the Congress put state law in this definitional section of aggravated felony. Then. And that's probably under 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 state law under and what's in the definitional section. Well, it's in this penultimate paragraph of 8 U.S.C. section 1101-843. Yes. So why what what purpose was there to put state law in there? The, in the penultimate sentence, right? Yeah. What it says it covers state law. It's it's telling you as just at Lopez and Gonzalez found not but it's Lopez and Gonzalez the Supreme Court said that you can qualify or state federal and and and, and foreign law could qualify as uh, an aggravated felony, but then again it doesn't mean that you have to just do away with a, with a categorical approach you still have to apply that it doesn't swallow how, the entire how would, rule. How would a foreign an offender of a foreign statute non States statute. How, are, how is that going to work? Yes, and the dissent came up with, with samples. Foreign alien smuggle, smuggling, uh, issuing ransom demands for hostages in Mexico, uh, stockpiling explosive materials in France. What, tell us where you're getting this from. This is a matter of Muniz 1. The dissent said, when would ever a foreign statute be an aggravated felony? Many ways. And I used to be a nice attorney, and I used to charge people and try to find different ways of, of charging uh, um, aliens. Uh, the hostages in Mexico, crime of violence. Stockpiling explosive materials, crime of violence. Uh, child pornography, potentially abuse of a minor uh, under the generic prong. Foreign alien smuggling, uh, a CAMT. I mean, there's different ways that you can be. So the purpose and intent of, the, of, of Congress 
and charging an alien in different ways is not destroyed by not finding arson, aggravated felony under 844. There's different ways that you can do it. And that's otherwise, the, if, if they didn't... You could also bring a jurisdictional claim as one of a crime of violence too, couldn't you? Well, the crime of violence, if you would charge, uh, I think, I, I think, uh, well, you have to look at the, how it's defined under, I think it's 18, uh, B, um, well, there's two problems on how you define it, but, but uh, if it's a state crime or it's a foreign crime, as long as it meets the elements of the crime of violence, the way it's defined under the statute, which it, I might be mistaken, but I... I is the federal statute ambiguous? It's, this one is not, uh, the, the statute is not ambiguous. It's clear that Congress, by defining, defining uh, aggravated statutes in really specific ways, by having... The, the last sentence there, it sort of says... It covers. The federal. The yeah, state, federal, and, and, and foreign. But again, I would go back to Lopez v. Gonzalez that says, it didn't say that it, it swallows the entire aggravated felony statute. It just says that you may, at some point, if it falls within the categorical, if, you, if using the categorical approach, you find is, a, is an aggravated felony, then nothing escapes. But you still, but still doesn't mean that you don't use a categorical approach. That, that's what I'm saying. That that's the that the statute doesn't mean that you take everything. Otherwise, Congress would have set the the aggravated felony with just generic crimes. Why, why bother with all the details on, on, on section after section, described in, defined in? If, if Just, we determine, I'm sorry about that. If we determine that this penultimate section, as they call it, of the statute is ambiguous, would we accord deference then to the BIA's interpretation of it? Uh, no. And the reason is that, um, well, uh, the penultimate sentence went back to Castillo v. Rivera in the Ninth Circuit. And that's probably ground zero for all this confusion. And in Castillo, when they, when they said that there's no other way to interpret the penultimate sentence because otherwise no state... What person, do we do if we think it's ambiguous? What do we do to resolve the ambiguity? It, well, the, the way you would do it is... Um, well, in that case, if there's it's ambiguous, just just in favor of, of, of Mrs. Spinal under the under why, the rule of why so? Because I think because well different different uh, judges you saying rule of lenity? Well probably well if there's an ambiguity, why is it why is it uh, in her favor? Well in that case it, just to answer your question, Mrs. Spinal does not believe that there's an ambiguity here. It's I didn't clear. say that I said if we find I'm sure she doesn't. She think it's she thinks it's unambiguous in the she reads it, mm -hmm. right? Yes. But it, I'm asking, if it is ambiguous, how do we res resolve that ambiguity so that we know what the statute means so we can apply it? If uh, the way you do it, uh, the way I would do it, just go back to Castillo, which is, th that started all this. The, the research is poorly done. It's really simple. Uh, and, uh, and then... The I'm not asking you any specifics. Mm -hmm. What's the general rule you have us follow? follow to resolve an ambiguity in that statute? Uh, the, if, if, if there was an ambiguity, I right. would... Um, uh, then th the way I would do it is... Would we ordinarily give Chevron deference to the, to the agency's interpretation? Oh, okay. Uh, if, well, I, I would in this case just because based on what my argument is probably not a reasonable way of interpreting Bautista that, that the Supreme Court that adding a new categorical approach rule, an exception that is not there, uh, it's only one exception. That's the way I would do it. It's not reasonable because the way they interpret it based on Castillo is just... Okay, so, so you would say we would not defer to the agency because their interpretation is unreasonable. That's correct. Then what would we do? Then, then based on, on the... Well, I, w I, would, I would suggest that, respectfully suggest that you follow the Third Circuit, which has a has a really good, um, uh, 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 sorry, has a really good, um, developed the, 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 how, the, the words, the plain language, how they found the described in versus w and the placement within, within the, 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 all the, the statute. We would just look at statutory construction rules and we would decide what it means. Yes, yes, that, that's, that's what I meant. Thank you. And I see my... Time is up in 15 seconds. Uh, you reserved some time. Yes, sir. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. You're welcome. Mr. Tucker.
May it please the Court, Colin Tucker for the Attorney General. The facts in this case are, the essential facts at least, are, are undisputed. I think it's clear enough what the relevant legal issues are. That being the case, I'm prepared to move right to questions. Move, move. You explain why you win under the legal arguments. Explain why you win. You've heard why you don't win. Our best argument, I think, Your Honor, is the, the penultimate sentence, which states that every offense defined under the aggravated felony statute is an aggravated felony, whether in violation of federal or state law. Is the statute ambiguous? I don't believe it is, Your Honor. Uh, the government's position is that it is not an ambiguous statute. Uh, following from that, the government's position is also if the court disagrees, then it should apply step two of Chevron and defer to the board's interpretation as reasonable. Now, I think that we see, uh, we've see we seen one. Sorry. Appreciate uh, you willing to stand on your brief then. No further questions for you. Thank you very much. In closing, the uh, petition for review should be denied. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Anything further? If the court has any more questions. Do you have any questions? No more questions. Thank, thank you very much. We thank both of you for your argument. We will have the clerk adjourn court and then we'll step down to Greek Council.